Hello and welcome to this uh, Scratch new presentation and today we're going to talk about custom commands. So custom commands are the ability you have to create new shortcuts inside of the Scratch UI to initiate or run external scripts from the application and that's really extend the tool set of Scratch. Here are the, the different types of custom commands that you can have. So you can start an external script or application. You can create a shortcut for a plugin, so you can use it on several shots. You can open a web page. You can start an XSL transform. You can start a post render script or application. And you can also apply like a plugin directly onto the second display only. So the first example I'm going to use is the application. So if I now go to my uh, system settings and preferences, I can directly link my custom commands to an external application or some applications such as this buster will do it for you using the installer. And here you have the different types of custom commands that you can add, as well as the path of the application and several options that we are going to see a bit later. Now, if I go back to my Scratch project and navigate to the Tools menu here on the left, you can see that I now have a new button. So if I select my shop, I can directly launch those busters from HSR directly from the Scratch UI. So instead of outputting my shots, loading them into those buster, I can do it directly from here. Okay, this is a similar uh, script that we developed for Scratch 2 Nuke, which is covered in another tutorial. Okay, now let's open another construct and let's work with the plugin. So here I have some shots. Okay, and what I want to do is create a shortcut for a plugin. So I'm going first to insert a plugin. I'm going to use uh, Sapphire, uh, where is it? Okay, let's take the grain remove. Let me tweak a little bit the values so it becomes visible. Okay, so this is the setting I would like to apply to all my shots. So I save it. So it's going to be a PLS file. Let's put it on the desktop. Okay, and now because we saved this preset, we can remove it from the source stack on the right side. Let's delete it. Okay, now let's go back to the construct, exit my project, go back to system settings, preferences, and I'm going to add a new custom command. Let's call it grain remove. Okay. So it's not an application, in that case, it's a plugin. So I need to tell Scratch the plugin type. So let me scroll down. And here is my grain remove and the preset that we just saved and which is on the desktop. Here we go. Now, here I have my options, and I just want to tell Scratch that I need to select the shot. Okay, if I go back to my uh, session, here we go. Now you can see I have a second button. Now if I select all my shots, wherever they are, they could be into any other constant, and click on Grand Remove, I now have all these shots stick to my cursor and you can see the small puzzle icon on the bottom left corner of the thumbnails. That means I can drop them here and now I have two versions, one with the plugin applied at the bottom and one without at the top. Now, let's talk about post render. So, post render. If I here create a name itself export, okay, and name it as usual using the S name, token, so I have the source name, here we go, select my 
folder for the export. Let's create one from here. Okay. Now, if I process the shot, I will have one folder correctly labeled with the source shot name, and each folder will contain the AF, XML, and MXF files. Now, you might be asked to provide the MXF directly with the shot name. So to do this, I'm going I'm navigating to uh, the support side, and we have a small post render script which is available in the database XML uh, chapter where you can learn how to create your own scripts. Here we go, so I'm going to get this uh, little sample. Okay, and I will need to have Python installed, which is a free library. Okay. So, let me just get this the script. I'm putting it on my desktop. Be aware that this script will work as it is on the, on the PC side, but if you're running on the OS X, you will need to edit the script to give him the path to the Python interpreter. Okay. Now, if I go back to my system settings, preferences, I create a new button. Let's call it uh, MXF. Okay, and it's a post render app. I just need to tell Scratch where is my script, which is here. And you can see it's actually a Python script. So let's select it. Okay. And now let's say wait till finished. Yes, because it's a post render application, it's a post render script. And if I go back to my project, I can now go back to my tools and you can see, oh, oh, I don't have the button here. And the reason is that if I go back to my output menu in the post render, now I can find my script in the small drop down. Right. So now if I process the sequence, you can see the script being run at the end. And if we look at the result, we still have all the folders created, but the script actually did a copy of the shots with the correct shot names. Now let's do something else and add the burning that I created earlier and saved onto my second display. So I'm just adding a new custom command. I call it second display. So it's a plugin and the plugin type is a burning. And the preset that I saved earlier is uh, here. There we go. Right. And here I'm going to select only use on dual head because I want it to be displayed only on my secondary display. Okay. Now, if I go back to my session, I enter the player. And if I navigate to Settings, Monitor, I will now find my new effect, my secondary burning, into the drop-down menu. Okay, so now let's talk about the XSL Transform. Okay, so I'm going back to my System Settings, Preferences, and I'm adding a new command. It's called an XSL export and the type is Excel transform. So if you want to know how to create your own script, just have a look at the support site where it's explained. Now it's going to use an XML export. So uh, I'm going to use a script currently, a default script, which is installed with Scratch. Okay. It's going to export an XML of the construct and of the one alert. I want to export the proxies and it's going to be an HTML export type. Okay. Now if I go to Scratch, here we go. I can go to the tools and here you can see I have my XSL export. And if I click to it, just need to point to a destination, give a name and create. 
So what it does is that actually it creates an XML export and this XML is converted by the XSL script into a web page that you can see here. And in that case, my script created a report. As you can see, setting up custom commands is very simple in Scratch and really allows you to extend the tool set available by creating custom shortcuts directly within the UI. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you. Bye-bye.